In this video, we are going to draw a set of four symbols of playing cards, with the goal of using just basic path techniques. First, we want to make sure that all symbols will be drawn inside the same area and will be the same size and same proportions. That's why it will be useful to just use the rectangle tool and with the help of the shift key, we are going to draw a square. Afterwards, we are going to view menu and then select guides and we are going to make a guide from this square. So basically, this will be the area where all symbols that we are going to draw will have to fit. So let's work a little bit more comfortable by zooming a little bit in this area. This will become our working area. So the main goal of this exercise is to learn how to work starting with the very basic shapes and draw with the minimum amount of anchor points. So first we are going to draw a heart-like shape using the ellipse tool. We are going to use the guides as well because we are going to start clicking on the first corner of the guide box and ending at the opposite corner. So we basically have a circle. We won't need anything else but to manipulate these four anchor points of the circle. For that sake, we need first of all to select the Direct Selection tool in Illustrator. And let's begin, for instance, by this very first point. After click on that point, we can see the two anchors and now we will use the Option key to just drag one of the anchors to a noun reference point. Let's do the same with the other anchor, still pressing the option key, and let's drag it until exactly the same position of the other anchor. OK, now let's work with this opposite anchor point. First of all, we select it and drag it using the Shift key to preserve the vertical direction to this another reference point. Next step will be to use again the option key to just manipulate separately these two anchor points that we are going to drag up to the bottom of the guide. Remember that even though these two manipulations this is still just one single anchor point so we can select it and drag it again using the shift key and placing it above the center of the box. So we have now ready the hard like shape we were looking for. Now we are going to draw the second part of this symbol that will be the standing foot. For that sake we are going to first of all select the rectangle tool and let's draw a rectangle that is the same width of the box and with an arbitrary height. Only with this rectangle that has only four anchor points it won't be enough. That's why with this rectangle still selected we are going to use the menu object and inside the option path we're going to add more anchor points to this shape. So now, instead of just single four anchor points, we're going to work with these two additional ones. Actually, we are going to select them by using the Shift key to select both middle points. These were the extra point we just added. And let's move it a little bit lower, maybe using the cursor keys. Now, we are going to take advantage that we have these four more extra anchor points and we are going to select these two vertex from the upper right and upper left corner and we just don't need it. So in the control bar just click over the remove selected anchor points. So we have the shape now. Notice now that this is a corner point. We want to convert it into a smooth point so we'll have two anchors to work with. To do so, first of all, we select this corner point and inside the control bar, 
we just click over this tool that converts this selected point into a smooth point. So we have now the two anchors. And the same way we did in the past, we're going to press the Option key to just manipulate one of the anchors and drag it to the final point. We can do that with the Shift key, so we are just moving along the vertical path. It's going to repeat the same operation with the other anchor point exactly to the same ending destination. So we have now what's going to be the beginning of that shape. Finally, and remember, this is just one single point. We can drag it using the Shift key to match this other point of the other shape. And finally, again, using the anchors to adjust in the shape of this foot. To make it symmetrical, it's very important that the two anchors may be matching exactly the final point. This way. Same way, we may be interested in moving this other point of the hard like shape in order to reshape it. But now these two points from this shape and this other one are just matching. So it will be very easy trying to move one of the points and we are moving the other point that we don't want to. So a good idea could be now that we have yet these two parts as a different object, just to select one of them that we don't want to manipulate and go to Object and lock it. Now we can work quietly with this other point. Just click over it and using the Shift key again, just make it a little bit more rounded. That's it. Now we are ready to unlock this object, so we can do so by selecting the option Unlock All from the Object menu. Now, before blend these two objects together, we are going to make a copy because we are going to reuse them in the future. Let's zoom out a little bit and just by selecting both objects and click and drag them using the Option key we just get a copy instantly. Okay, so now finally we are going to blend these two objects together using the Pathfinder. For that sake, we are going to select, using the Shift key, these two objects, and then go to Window and select the option Pathfinder. We just click on the first mode, and this is going to become one single path. This is plain to see if we select the option Outline from the View menu. So we can see all of the illustration in Outlines. Selecting the first shape, we can notice that we have achieved to make the first symbol just using 9 points. To go back to the regular view, we just go to again View menu and then switch to Preview. Ok, we are done with the first symbol then, we are going to draw the next one, that is the heart, but we already have it, it's just this piece. So let's take it here apart, and let's turn upside down, but this is very easy to do, because we just need to click on the transform link in the control panel, and just type 180 degrees. So now we have more or less the correct shape, but not the correct size. But this is again very easy to make the transformation. We just click and drag from the bottom point of the bounding box. We are down now again with heart. Now let's start with maybe the more complicated one, that is the clover. So let's move a little bit apart in the working area. And again, the idea is to start drawing a very basic shape and just working with anchor points instead of drawing some more complicated shape and use uh, duplicate or other transformations. First of all, as long as we are done with this symbol, we just move it apart so we can take advantage of the guide we already drawn. And we are using, of course, the same bounding box. 
Again, this time we're going to use a circle as the starting point. So, just as we did, just draw a circle. But this time we won't use the just four corner points of the regular circles. We need more anchor points. So again, we just choose from the object menu the option path and add anchor points. Now we have up to eight anchor points. Now let's take a look carefully how we are going to reshape this circle into a clover. Maybe it would be interesting then to work with outlines. Now it's very easy to see where all of the eight anchor points are. First of all, we're going to start with this first one, for instance. We just select this corner point and drag it up to the center of the bounding box. That, of course, is the same center of the circle. Then, again, by using the Option key, we're going to move this first anchor point to the corner of the bounding box and do the same with this other anchor point. Now we're going to make exactly the same transformation with the other three corner points. Remember, first step, move it to the center and then anchor points to the corners. Notice that once we are done, we get a four leaf clover. To remove this extra leaf, we just select this extra point and just remove it. Let's watch it in the preview mode and we have finally the three leaf clover we were looking for. This clover symbol has its own foot as well. That's why we just preserved this copy of the food we did and just move it exactly inside the bounding box. More or less this way. Finally, let's move this ending point a little bit upward. But to avoid working with other points we don't want, let's make again the selection of this first path and block it. Then carefully just click on this ending point and move it upward. Finally, again, let's unlock all of the points. But again, this clover symbol is made of two parts. Then again, to blend it together, let's select it and make use again of the pathfinder. And now, finally, we're going to draw the simplest symbol that is going to be the diamond. First of all, let's move apart this clover symbol and we're going to use the same bounding box. The first step will be to draw a square. It is the simplest shape. Then, we're going to use the transform options to just rotate it 45 degrees. At this point, the simplest way would be to select the diamond and then use the Scale tool from Illustrator. The Scale tool scales every object by default from the center. So we just click and drag the mouse from anywhere inside the diamond to scale it down up to the bounding box. We could narrow this diamond later if we select it and use the transform options here. Remember, first of all, we just unlink the width and height and we want to make this diamond a little bit narrow so we are just going to type inside the width value but remember in Illustrator every time you have a field with width, heights or positions you can add, subtract or divide and this latest operation is where we are going to do just by typing divide by, for instance, 2. So we are making twice narrower. Okay, so finally before exporting these four symbols into four different images, let's color it a little bit. 
We can do that by selecting the two symbols that will be in red. And for instance, let's double click on the field color. Here we can access directly to the color swatches and just select the CMYK red. We click on OK and we finally have our four definite symbols. To verify if we did everything well, we can make a check using the Layers panel. Let's go to Window and then Layers. So if we have just four symbols made out of four paths, we have only this one, two, three and four path, plus of course the guide. So it's well done. Now we are ready to convert these four paths into four images for exporting. We are going to do so by using the artboard tool. So let's select this tool and we are going to just click over the different four symbols. This tool is going to recognize automatically the bounding boxes of each and any of the symbols. And if we don't need any of the additional artboards, we just click on the closing icon. We have now these four artboards that will become now four PNG files. So let's go to the file menu and select export. Now we're going to select the PNG format that is a bitmap format and let's check the use artboards. We want to export everything so just click on all and let's type a name for the playing card set. Let's be original and type playing cards and finally click on the export. After setting up the options, just click on OK button and we are done. These are the contents of the exporting folder and you can check that we have four different PNGs, exactly the same size. As a summary, remember, try to make your vector graphics using few corner points and then work with the anchors in a small way.